Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been a little while. We have moved to our new shop here and uh, got lots of space, lots more light, so phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't seen the shop tour, go check out that video. It's up on YouTube by now. Um, all right, so back to our BP engine build. Uh, we have the block back from the machinist. We have our pistons back. I can show you here. We have all of our parts lined up, ready to go. Uh, everything's been measured. I'll go over the steps for what needs to be done there. Um, all of the main pieces for the bottom end set up and ready to go and I've already done the balancing and I'll go back and show you the steps for that as well. Alright, so we have our engine blocks. I want to go over what I did and I'll show you some of the some of the steps about it. But uh, first thing, cleaning. Cleaning is not a suggestion. Cleaning is a requirement. It's the most important thing you need to do when you're building a motor. Um, take it from someone who has done it the wrong way. When a tiny little metal shaving gets into the right place at the right time, no more motor. So, when the block comes back from the machinist, it's usually still pretty dirty. Um, my machinist at least leaves the cutting fluid on it to prevent the block from flash resting on the way back. So when I get it, it's got lots of machining oil on it. Um, he does a, uh, a hot tank cleaning before he cuts it, so all of the grime and the dirt is gone. But I do two or three more cleanings when I get it back just to make sure there's no leftover shavings floating around in the block. So. Here's our block. So first thing I did is I did a, a first cleaning, first pass on the block. I, I clean it with a Gunk Original is my favorite cleaner and uh, sprayed the whole thing down and washed it off with a hose, put more gunk on it, washed it again, and then sprayed it off with Brake Clean that dries quick and doesn't leave any of the uh, residual liquid behind to rust. Then we masked off the block and painted it using a high temp engine primer and then a high temp engine paint and then we let it dry for a couple of days to make sure that it's nice and solid before we went back to it. Now the next thing, I then cleaned it again. Now, if you don't have a set of these brushes, go get some. They're not expensive and they are a lifesaver. So what I'm going to do now is again, it's always helpful when you know why you're doing something. I'm going to show you a little video tutorial of what all of the oil patches, passages go to in the block and why it's really critical that you clean them out. So there's two things that can happen that are really bad if any metal shaving left over from the machining process is left inside the block. Uh, and I will say this is different for an aftermarket build than an OEM build. A lot of these passages um, from the manufacturer originally are cast in place, they're not machined. There's not a ton of post-process machining done on a factory block. Obviously it's cheaper if you don't have to do that. When we're doing an aftermarket block and we've overboard it, we've decked the head, we've added a ton of cutting and tons of larger metal shavings are potentially stuck inside the engine and there's bad things that can happen. The metal shaving gets in between the piston and the cylinder wall, it'll score the wall, it'll start burning oil, you'll lose compression. If a piece of metal shaving gets into the oil passages and goes through a bearing, goodbye bearing. And you say, well, yeah, but the oil filter is going to catch all that. Well, there's one major piece that is pre-oil filter in the system, and that's the oil pump. And now Joshua steps in. What do you need? On one of my motors, I had a piece of little tiny metal shaving get up inside of the oil pressure relief valve inside of the oil pump and it's stuck open. Goodbye motor. Um, and this was a couple hundred miles after the motor had been put back together and it had been floating around in the oil pan and finally got sucked up and that was it. So clean religiously. Again it helps to know why you're cleaning. So I'm going to go over now all of the passages on the block here. <clears throat> and so it just it's a good visual to see what's going on. So the cool thing about a cast piece like this is, is all of these weird outcrops and dents and bosses, they're, they're not random. Every one of them is there for a very specific reason. You just don't know what the reason is. So, start in the front. The oil pump bolts to this face, and this is where the oil pressure is sent into the block. So the oil comes up through the pickup, through the pump, and it's sent in here. Now, you can see a little bit of light down in that hole. The oil is fed through this tube and comes up there. This is where it then fills the oil filter, 
goes through the webbing and the filter and then back into the block through the center. From there, it goes along this channel in both directions. Now, if we come along here, there's a hole at the end. That hole is going to get a plug in it. The only reason this hole is there is they had to have it there to cast that passage through the block. And there's a hole on each end. And we're going to be capping both ends. When it was sent off to the machinist, we removed these plugs such that, I don't know if you can see it from that camera angle, I can now send a cleaning brush all the way through this and out the other side and make sure there's no gunk left in the block. And forgive me, I already have the main caps on. Um, it's easier to see without these on here, but our oil passages, this becomes our manifold for positive pressure on long front to back. Along this manifold, you can see the beginnings of these little roots. Each one of these roots comes up through here and feeds a main bearing journal. This one on the front, you can really see where the casting line comes through and it goes right into this manifold. So our, our pump pressurizes this tube, pressurizes the oil filter, comes back through here, and it gets to come up and pressurize the main bearing journals. From the crankshaft, it goes into the center of the crank, and that's what pressurizes your rod bearing journals. And that's really the extent of the oiling system here, apart from one other one which is unique to the Miata. Not every motor has this, but we have um, oil squirters on the bottom of each piston and that is a separate little bore that goes straight down and again meets this exact same uh, manifold of oil pressure. From here you can see that if any one of these passages were to get opened you would leach oil pressure out of the, the orifice that's most open. Uh, if you if an if a oil squirter comes loose and falls off you're gonna lose oil pressure. If one of your bearings spins and this hole is not lined up with here anymore, you're going to lose oil pressure to that section. The last passage is right here, which is go what goes up to the top and sends oil pressure up to your cylinder head. So, what we do when we're cleaning this is we want to make sure every one of those passages is as clean as can possibly be. So, we take a brush like this and we send that brush up with an extension on it all the way through the block and clean out and we do that until this brush comes out pure white with no gunk left on it and then I'll shoot brake clean all the way through the hole we will um, shoot brake clean through all of these passages run brushes through them and the way, because it's a casting, every one of these holes has an exit. They're not dead end holes. So you can send a brush through every single passage. We send a brush down through this passage all the way to that manifold. Um, and we clean out every single passage. Up top, this is the jet that, pr that reduces the flow of oil to the cylinder head and also adds some pressure. We want to make sure that that jet, which is very easy to clog, has nothing left over from the decking operation in it. So we're going to shoot our brake clean through that and wait until we see fluid coming out of our manifold and we'll do it both directions and then we'll send a brush through it. So clean, clean, clean. You cannot clean too much. It's not possible. Keep cleaning until you're 100% sure there is no little shavings. You can stick your finger in any of these passages and there's nothing on your finger when it comes back out again. Then we are ready to start measuring for assembly. and. If the block sits around for a while, right before I do a final assembly, I'm going to clean all those passages again. If it takes a couple of weeks, you forgot a bearing, you need to you know, have something else uh, looked at while you're putting it together and it sits for a while, cover it, but when you get ready to put it together, clean all those passages again. It doesn't take long, totally worth your time. <clears throat> and we will go through the same process on the cylinder head when we get around to building that.